I'm not altruistic, but I am an animal. Hey there, selfless shellfish. Jules here for D News. In 2012, researchers in Monterey Bay, California, observed a group of humpback whales protecting the body of a gray whale from being eaten by a group of killer whales for six and a half hours. That sounds pretty counterintuitive, since the humpbacks seemingly got no benefits from defending another species of animal, but risked their own safety nonetheless. Isn't that against evolution and survival of the fittest? This altruistic behavior is puzzling, but it's not unique. A July 2016 study in marine mammal science notes at least 115 times that humpbacks have attacked killer whales, sometimes allowing the killer whale's prey to escape. Humpback whales are not the only ones in the animal kingdom to show altruism. And to be clear, this isn't philosophical altruism. Biologists have defined altruism in nature as any behavior that improves another animal's health and chances of reproduction at the expense of their own. Dolphins have been noted to protect human scuba divers from sharks. Certain monkeys will make noise to warn for predators, giving away their own position. And bats have been observed sharing food with members of their group who don't have any. According to age-old evolutionary theory, anything that prevents a species from procreating will likely be phased out in favor of attributes that increase chances of procreation. And for a long time, scientists have pointed to a sort of selfish gene, which is not actually one specific gene, but rather the fact that animals that act selfishly at the expense of other members of their species will be more likely to procreate and pass along whatever heredity made them more selfish. Selfishness begets selfishness. In this light, altruism should be a recessive trait, and logically it would have been phased out altogether in evolution, turning us all into parking spot grabbing, line cutting, Halloween candy hoarding jerks. But clearly that's not the case, at least not in the animal kingdom. So why do some animals show signs of altruism? Well, in the case of the humpbacks from the beginning of this video, one hypothesis suggests that they're actually responding to the killer whale's predatory calls, on the off chance that it's attacking another humpback. Because if it was, altruism would be a useful tool, since they would then be protecting more of their clan and increasing their mutual chances of survival. Other forms of altruism, like a monkey picking bugs off another's back or bats feeding those without food, are actually reciprocal behaviors. So even though you think, wow, that's really nice, in reality, a bug picking monkey will likely get their own bugs picked off by another monkey. And the same is true of bats sharing food. In short, some expressions of altruism may just be communally paying it forward so that everybody stays healthy and fed and is then able to reproduce in a better environment. It's almost as if behaving altruistically is a bit selfish. Studies have shown that more closely related animals can be expected to behave more selflessly with each other, which makes sense in the context of promoting a species. Mothers must act selflessly to their children to keep them alive. Mates must try and protect each other for procreation, and so on. Ultimately, while animals may seem to be acting altruistically, they're still really just looking out for themselves and their species. Special thanks to K Jewelers for sponsoring this episode. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. So animals help others to help themselves. But what about animals that are actually hybrids of two different species? We talk about why evolution makes these hybrid animals right here. And what about you? Are you altruistic or are you just trying to help yourself? Let us know down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to come back here for more D news every day.